We'd like to thank everyone for coming here to uh, be with us today to worship our Heavenly Father and uh, let him feel our, us here taking him in to ourselves. And uh, we just ask that every one of you uh, have a good, blessed Sabbath day today. Uh, hopefully, every one of you will be blessed by the message that is brought to you. And uh, we just ask that every one of you keep us in your hearts and your minds and keep those out there in the in the area in their in your hearts and your minds and let people feel the presence of the holy spirit in their lives and uh, know that uh, we are here to worship our father and our heavenly beings and uh, know that they are with us in everything that we do and uh, with that being said i'll call john day up here to give the invocation. Shall we bow our heads? Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for such a beautiful Sabbath morning. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be here to guide and direct in each and every one of us our thoughts, that we will keep our minds stayed upon you and upon the sermon that is being brought to us today. We pray and ask these things in the loving and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. All right. I mean, you could do better. Good morning. Perfect. All right. Happy Sabbath. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. And this is a better morning because what are we celebrating today? Veterans. I want to see all the veterans, please. Stand up. All the veterans. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you're next to them, give them a hand. Oops. Give them, shake their hand and say thank you for all the services and for all the things you have done. So now we're going to start the praise and worship, and we're going to start with uh, hymn number 614, Sound the Battle Cried. 614, let's all sing together with all of our hearts to lift up our Lord's name. Amen. <laughs> I see the fold is nigh, raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your arm and on, stand firm, everyone. Rest calls upon his holy land, everyone. Rally round the banner. Alon Hosanna, cries is captain of the mighty throne. Strong to meet the foe, marching on we go, while our cause we know must prevail. Shield and banner bright gleaming in the light. Marching, cross in. Soldiers round about the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout a long Hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throne. O thou God of all, hear us when we call. Help us one and all by night. imagine how beautiful that day is going to be do you guys have an imagination amen all right now we're going to sing 647 together Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord 
word. He, he's trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He had loosed the faithful lining of his terrible sweet sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He has sounded for the trumpet that shall never call retreat. soul to answer him be jubilant my feet our God is marching on everyone glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah his truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With the glory in his bosom that transfigured you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. While God is marching on. say amen. amen praise the lord all right opening hymn great is thy faithfulness number 100 everybody please be see stand up my goodness <laughs> sitting down up standing it's all right i'm excited because i'm here in the lord's house amen, amen. 100 great is thy faithfulness
Amen. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. God is good all the time. Amen. Today's loose offerings is going to our annual sacrifice offering for the global mission. If you could make a difference in someone's life by giving up something for one week, would you do it? What would you give up? The latest issue of your favorite magazine? A pizza? A new pair of shoes. Think what you can give up this week so someone you don't know can be introduced to Jesus. And then put that amount in an offering envelope marked Annual Sacrifice Offering. Your gift might sponsor a seminar about healthful living or help support a global mission pioneer in a city where most people have never heard about Jesus. Just think, one day you can meet the person you sacrificed for in heaven. If you have courage, ask God how much he wants you to give him. By giving beyond your regular tithes and promise offerings, if you agree to give God what he is asking, he will provide what he has asked you to give. Will the deacons please come forward? Though this is your opportunity to sacrifice and share God's love with someone who doesn't know Jesus, your gift will help reach every unreached person what would you sacrifice for that individual? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly accept the advice that Apostle John gives us in Hebrews 13, 16, where he said, sacrifices are pleasing to God. So Lord, we ask you to bless our offerings of sacrifice so that they may multiply, multiply and help global mission pioneers reach the unreached. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, when Elder Bo asked me if I would be willing to do the prayer today, I, I'll be quite honest, I was scared to death. But I also felt blessed, though, that, that he would even consider. So uh, I know that today is veterans, and I would like to... Uh, make sure that I say something to them. You know, in John 15, verse 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Um, that's one of our creeds where I work also. And this is... Um, something for them, Romans 8, 38, 39, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. At this time, uh, if you can kneel, uh, I'm going to attempt it, but uh, I may not get back up. <laughs> Dear Lord in heaven, we come to you today giving you the glory and the praise, Lord. Lord, bless this Sabbath. Bless the pastor as he brings the word, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings that you provide for us each and every day. Lord, be with us. Let us gain knowledge to benefit our spiritual growth. Please forgive us of our sins and our shortcoming. Always guide us and show us the way. We pray these things in your dear loving Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church family.
Just want to say welcome to each and every single one of us present here this morning. It is an, is another privilege to be here in the house of the Lord to worship yet another Sabbath to celebrate Veterans Day. I want to say a special welcome to our online audience. We thank you for worshiping with us and to our regular church members. Thank you for coming and to our visiting friends. I know one visitor, Melinda, she used to work with me and it's a pleasure to see her. She's not an Adventist, but she says she's looking for the church and she's at the right church. Just want to say welcome and happy Sabbath and also to our other guests. The scripture verse for this week is taken from 2 Timothy 2 verse 4. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. So, yeah, before I begin, today at 115 to 215, Sister Sharon is going to be at the Brookdale Senior Living Center on Harrison Avenue. They'll be singing. So she's asking if anyone would like to volunteer and come with her. Uh, just let her know. But she's really, she, sh she wants to be there by 115 to start at 215. I know that she knows that there's going to be choir practice today, and she has already spoken to Miss Andrea. And so by the time we should finish singing at 215, we should be able to make it back to the church by 230 for choir practice. And also, the Toys for Tots is an opportunity to bring an unwrapped gift or toy for a child between the ages of newborn to 16 years old by December 9th to our church in the lobby. And so this is also another community outreach we have going on. We have until December 9th to bring a brand new toy, ages newborn to 16, and you leave them right here in the lobby. There will be boxes in the lobby for you to put them in, as well as on Sunday, November 19th at one o'clock, we have another my brother's keeper feeding the homeless event starting at 1 p.m. in Springfield. So today at 2.30 is going to be choir rehearsal here in the church sanctuary. All are invited and it, we are only three weeks away from this event so we're imploring everyone to come and out. You don't have to be a singer but come and sing for our community. And today at 6.30 is the Adventures Chili Cook-Off. We just, as how you guys came and supported the Pathfinders last week at our fundraiser, we're imploring each and every single one of you to come out this week, again tonight, to support our Adventures. They are the future leaders of tomorrow. And I'm City Seventh Day Adventist Church. I'm going to invite you myself that starting this Wednesday at 6.30, we are going to begin a five part presentation on the theme even so come you don't want to miss it wednesday night the undeniable uh, proof of jesus return thursday night the rapture every eye will see him why that's important friday night the title is remember lot's wife sabbath morning we're going to study i go and prepare a place for you what does that mean and then sabbath afternoon uh near at the doors you don't want to miss it. Now is the time to draw closer to Jesus and to see for ourselves what the Bible says. You and I both know we're living in interesting times. And take advantage of this opportunity. Young adults, I invite you, please, you have to be there. Settle it in your hearts that you will be at every presentation. I'm going to invite all the families, everyone, invite someone you know. You don't want to miss it. Now is the time for us to draw closer to our Savior. God bless you. Hope you have a good rest of the day, and we'll see you Wednesday. God bless. Amen. So as you can see, that is our guest speaker for our AY Prophetic Week. So each and every single night, he will be talking on a different topic. However, it ties into the theme, Even So Come, which is found in Daniel chapter 2. So on Wednesday to Friday, beginning at 6.30 p.m., uh, he's going to be talking. And then after that, we're going to have fellowship uh, service in the fellowship hall after. And Sabbath morning, we have church service beginning at 1030. He's our speaker. He's going to preach on his other topic. And then we're going to have potluck that afternoon. And then at 4 p.m., we gather back here into the sanctuary, and he's going to be presenting on his final topic at 4 o'clock. And then right after that, at 6.30 p.m., we're going to have Friendsgiving dinner. 
all are invited. We implore each and every single one to stay after so that we can fellowship together as a church and as a community. And also the following Sabbath is going to be the church Thanksgiving event on Sabbath, November 25th, starting at 1030. We implore everyone to come. We implore you to bring a guest. We implore you to bring your families and just to worship with us. At the count of three, we say we connect, we equip, and we grow. One, two, three. This morning, we're going to recognize those people that have chosen to serve in the armed forces of this country. But first, I'd like to read a couple of scriptures to you, if I could. I'm reading from Daniel, second chapter, verse 20. This was after King Nebuchadnezzar had gone out to all of his people that was involved in witchcraft, fortune telling, all kinds of stuff, for an answer. He had had a dream and he wanted answers to it. And he decreed that if they couldn't do that, that they were gonna be destroyed. So it came down to Daniel and of course he and the others, the other three that work with him, uh, they prayed and went to bed that night. They weren't concerned that they were going to be destroyed. Anyway, Daniel's answer to the most powerful king that's ever been on this earth, other than Christ, he said, blessed be the name of God. And I'm going to kill this thing forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. I believe that God directs each one of us to the path that we're going to take. Now, we can choose not to go that path. We can uh, do a lot of things. Jonah, he, he wasn't re really successful and he became very successful. And uh, but I think God picked certain people to be the warrior class of this country, to, to preserve the freedoms, the rights, the privileges that we enjoy today. We have each day men and women who go to work that don't know if they're gonna come home that evening. We have a certain group of people that the alarm or the beeper back in the day, we had those beepers we carried, but if that thing went off at two o'clock in the morning when the wife woke up at six, we were maybe somewhere in another country. We had 30 minutes to get there and we were gone. So there are a special group of people who answer that call, who put their lives on the lines and who I think we owe a, a, a debt to. So with that said, go ahead and start, James. We picked out this little medley that represent the armed forces, the, little, the songs, that, uh, the medleys that go with each one of them, the anthem, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> I'd like all those members who have served in the United States Army to please stand. Come on, brothers. Please remain standing if you would, brother. All right, those who serve the United States Navy, please stand. Brothers, if you just, all of you, keep remain standing. All of, all of effort, please stand. Come on, all you swab jockeys, get up there.
Do we have any members of the United States Coast Guard present? Please stand. United States Air Force. Come on, brothers, get up there. If all of you would continue standing, I want all the veterans to please stand. United States Marine Corps, Semper Fi Dallas. Where's Mike at? I need somebody to stand with me. Come on, please stand. Veterans, if, if I could ask you to please stand with me again, if you, if you possibly could. I would like for you to turn so that the, the members of the audience can see you. If you're on this side over here, do a half left turn. Over here, do a half right turn. Show the faces. And to those folks who are out there in the, in the audience for our extended church family, for all you veterans, we salute you as well. If you would, please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Father, for the commitment that these folks have made to keeping the rights, the privileges, the freedoms that this nation enjoy today that they have preserved them with their service. On any given day, at any given place, in the armed forces, we lose people. And each one of these people have stood in harm's way, even if they were working in a, a galley somewhere making cookies, there's always a chance of something going wrong. So I just thank you, Lord, for preserving these people. And I thank you even more that they're here in this church today. So with all that said, Lord, I just thank you for them, for the church, and for the freedoms that we enjoy in this, in this nation today. In God's name we pray, amen.
scripture reading this morning is 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 10. We, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. All was bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. God bless. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Well, good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. If you feel grateful for the mercies of God in your life today, can you say amen? amen. Can we say glory be to God? Yes, can we say hallelujah? hallelujah? Thank you, Brother John, for uh, sharing the scripture reading with us. Thank you to all the veterans in your day. May the Lord continue to bless your lives and the lives of your families. Uh, today is a very special day because it's the Sabbath and we are rejoicing in so many ways. I do have a praise report that I would like to share. Raise your hand if you know a Brick and Rushima Small. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you knew that they were expecting. Raise your hand if you knew, okay? I have great news. Uh, the baby came last night. Can we get an amen? He was 10 pounds and six inches. And Elder Bo said, please give him uh, an ID so that he can go to work. <laughs> So, uh, break, Rushima, if you guys are listening, I'm pretty sure you are. May the Lord bless you. Children are a blessing from God, and may he give you wisdom to uh, educate this child and also Antonia. Nathaniel is his name. So, please keep the, uh, the small family, Brick and Rushima, in your prayers. Amen? Can we all stand? Let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, sister, for sharing special music with us today. So let's all stand and have a word of prayer before we start. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you this Sabbath morning and we rejoice in the fact that there's an abundance of wisdom in your word. We want to say thank you for the Bible, Lord. Thank you for the message that is found in its pages. I pray that if anyone came this morning searching for answers to the difficulties of life, May the Bible speak for itself loud and clear so that we can have the greatest assurance and encouragement that we will ever receive. And that is a thus says the Lord. So I pray for your Holy Spirit to illuminate us as we discuss. And I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. He won't be able to help you. A voice was heard from across the room, crying out loud, He won't be able to help you. It all started that morning when General Bruce welcomed the 77th uh, Infantry Division that has just been reactivated. After a full day of orientation, a noise of confusion filled the barracks. And men were excited and fearful at the same time. Company D were ready for uh, the training ahead of their deployment to Okinawa shortly after. So this condecorated unit was famous for a series of su successful missions that they uh, performed during World War I. So after seeing everything that they have saw, these soldiers in the 77th Division were older, they were tougher, and they were more cynical than the regular crop of draftees that would come. So these are experienced individuals, veterans already, with plenty of experience and mileage in their duties. However, among these experienced and fearless men, there was a newcomer who seemed to be a little out of place for the group. This was not the regular, you know, big town uh, 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 volunteer or, or military individual. 
this was a country boy who was a little nervous, but at the same time determined to serve his country, even at the expense of his life. He showed up. He was determined that he was going to do as best that he can. So right before the lights went out, this newbie closed out his Bible and then softly kneeled down by his bunk bed. Once the lights went out, that's when a military boot flew from across the room. And right after the boot, that's when the voice was heard saying, God won't be able to help you this time. He won't be able to help you. Are you guys with me? A newcomer, a little fearful, joining the 77th Division of Experience Individual. And that's how a difficult life of service started for private Desmond Doss. Have you heard of Desmond Doss before? Right? A country boy from Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, other soldiers used to mock him and call him all sorts of names, right? They used to call him Bible boy. They used to call him Holy Jesus. They used to call him preacher, right? Carger, for instance, was a man in his 30s with a drinking problem. He made of Desmond the recipient of all sorts of foul humor and language and also humiliation. Day in and day out, this individual, Carger, made it a point to humiliate Desmond because of his beliefs. One day during training, Carger said, when you go into combat, Desmond, you are not going to come, you're not going to come back alive. Because if the enemy doesn't, I'm going to shoot you myself. That's what Carger said to a young Desmond Duss, oh Panama City Saints. Desmond was a controversial figure and a man at odds. He was at odds with his peers because uh, they believed that he was a weirdo and a coward. He was at odds with his superiors because they refused to accommodate his request for having a weekly day off. And he was at odds with his enemy for sure who would try to take away his life in combat. Desmond was a controversial figure and a man at odds. But why all of this hatred towards Desmond? Why is it that everyone around him was trying to uh, 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 do something against him? Well, Desmond was a conscientious objector or a conchi, right? A conchi is someone who is opposed to bearing arms while serving in the armed forces on grounds of religious principles. A conscientious objector was someone who said, no, because of what I believe, I am not going to hold a gun or whatever type of arm in my arms. Because what I believe is more important than what I'm going to do. President Roosevelt signed an ex executive order granting conchies the right to avoid carrying a gun. So based on these privileges, Desmond was not, would not accept any sort of weapon. The reason for such a radical decision was based on his beliefs, on his conviction, right? He did not consider the Ten Commandments as mere guidelines to be followed whenever it was convenient, right? The Ten Commandments for Desmond was not something that you put to the side when things get rough. Desmond was convinced that the Ten Commandments were still binding and they were the rule that a Christian should follow even till this day. Specifically and particularly the, ten, the Sixth Commandment where it says, Thou shall not what? Thou shall not kill. Desmond was raised in a Seventh-day Adventist home. He had received his entire formal education in a one-room Seventh-day Adventist school. He was fully involved in a Seventh-day Adventist church. So Desmond's conviction created a huge gap between him and everyone around him. And he was despised. He was judged. 
He was ridiculed and he was rejected because of his faith. And thus he ended up being the loneliest soldier in the 77th division. Are you guys with me? Desmond does. He faced all sorts of adversities only because he wanted to do the right thing before God. You know, the Bible tells us the story of another lonely soldier. And although this uh, uh, next individual was not a military in the sense of the modern word, right? He was a military or a soldier in the spiritual army of God. A faithful individual with high standards just like Desmond, right? I am referring to someone named Job. Have you heard of Job before? Job, right? He too was judged. He too was ridiculed. He too was rejected by those around him. His friends Eliphaz, for instance, accused him of various wrongdoings when he said, this is what he said, it is not your wickedness great and your iniquity without end. Eliphaz accused Job of iniquity and sinful ways. And he strongly believed that the reason why Job was suffering, it was because of his sinful ways. So Job was accused by all three of his friends. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Sophar, who doubted him and accused him, right? And not only his friends, but even his own wife came after Job and asked him to renounce his God. This is what Job's wife said. Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. So just like Desmond, I imagine that Job to a certain extent felt like the loneliest soldier in the army of God. As you can see up in the screen, Job faced all sorts of adversity, right? He had wealth and livestock, and that was the best way of you to become wealthy in biblical times, especially so early in the history of redemption. Yeah, you, you, you had wealth according to how much livestock you had. He had also servants all over all around him. He had uh, sons and daughters. He also had a uh, health and he for sure enjoyed a great social status. As you can see to the right hand side, these passages from the book of Job demonstrate how each and every single one of those were taken away from Job. Only because he wanted to remain faithful to his profession of faith. So when I say that there's some points of similarities between Desmond and Job. I mean that both of these men felt that they were the only soldiers in the army of God. Job experienced suffering and due to his circumstances, he became lonely. He chose to be a conscientious objector by refusing to give in into peer pressure and he uplifted the banner of resilience. Can you imagine everyone against you and yet remaining faithful? Well, I don't know how many of you can relate to these stories of sacrifice and pain. But these two men were fighters. They fought against all odds to remain faithful. And guess what? If you've been a Christian long enough, I guess that you too may relate in more than one way to both of these men. You too, it's possible that you have been dealing with this crucible yourself. It is possible that if you've been a Christian long enough, you have your own stories to tell. It is very possible that you may be dealing with opposition and adversity in your life, surrounded by older, tougher, and cynical individuals right now as we speak. It may be the case that you too have a story similar to Desmond or another story similar to Job. It might be the case that right now you may feel like the loneliest soldier in the army of God who came to the sanctuary this morning searching for answers. Lord, talk to me because I feel like I have nobody else. You may be going through a challenging period where in a very subtle way, those around you are begging you to curse God. 
renounce to him and move on from your faith. Maybe just like Job, you are being stripped away from everything that you had. Maybe you or someone that you love lacks health. And while you pray in the middle of the night, it feels like life is throwing a huge military boot at you. And that's when you can hear the voice of the enemy saying, he won't be able to help you this time. Now, as you struggle with not getting a better job because of the Sabbath, right? As you are accused of being part of a cult, right? As you fail to live up to the social expectation of your friends who want you to go places and do things that you know that they go against your beliefs and therefore you refrain from doing such, such things, as you are discriminated and even offended at times, as you are perceived as a weirdo and a coward, as you may be tempted to question your faith and you may be wondering, where is God where I suffer? I have news for you in the name of Jesus this morning. As you struggle and navigate the difficulties of life, I have a word of encouragement for you this morning. Praise the Lord that the Bible is not silent as we suffer. Amen? As we suffer, we can turn to the word. And we can hear the voice of God speaking to us, giving us encouragement, reminding us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness on the heavenly places. We are reminded today that we are in the midst of a great controversy. And as we decide to follow Christ, we must, listen, we must expect suffering. Jesus himself said, if anyone would like to follow me, pick up what? The cross and follow me. So as we navigate the difficulties of life, we must realize that we are soldiers in the middle of the greatest fight ever fought a cosmic conflict between good and evil in which suffering is the consequence of sin in other words whenever you decide to be a conscientious objector for the name of god you must expect suffering Ellen White says, the church of Christ may be fitly compared to an army. To a what? To an army. The life of every soldier, that's you and me. The life of every soldier is one of toil, hardship, and danger. The quote continues saying that the tempter the enemy of the soul never leaves his posts. He's always there waiting as a silent enemy to bring you down, to crush you, to keep you away from getting closer to Christ, to damage your relationship with him, to discourage you. So we as an army must understand that we are going to experience suffering in one way or another. I heard someone say the other day that the design of the devil is to destroy your faith. Did you hear that? Everything that goes wrong around you is meant to destroy your faith. That is his ultimate goal. He seeks for opportunities to bring you down and crushed your trust in God. His desire is to strip everything away from you so that you may curse God and that you may die eternally. But at times, 
When you feel like the loneliest soldier in God's army, that's when you must remember what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. This is what the Bible says. We are hard pressed on every side. We may be pressured. We may be conflicted and opposed by everything around us. It might be our health. It might be our relationships. It might be the situation at church. It might be at work. It might be with our family. It might be with friends. Whatever the case may be, the design of the devil is to press us down as much as he can, to bring you down, to push us down so that we may renounce to our faith. Yet Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, although you may be hard pressed on the side, you are not crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. You remain because of your faith in him. You are perplexed and troubled and anxious for several things, yet you are not despair, is what the Bible says. You may be persecuted. You may be uh, uh, persecuted and, 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 and people may be around you. Your enemies may be looking for you, yet you are not forsaken, as the Bible says. You may be struck down and drawn into the floor. You may be lying down and you may be defeated. However, God tells you, but you are not destroyed. Can we get an amen? It's a message for every soldier here present today. Yes, we will expect to be beaten to feel lonely, to be uh, 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 perceived in a certain way, to be removed to the side because we have decided to become conscientious objectors in the mighty name of Jesus who say no to the world and yes to God, who say no to sin and yes to purity, who say no to the things of this world that may distract us, but we find refuge and faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. You are not crushed. You are not despaired. You are not forsaken. And for sure, you are not destroyed. Amen? You know, Marcus, where's Marcus? Marcus wrote something on Facebook a few weeks ago that brought a smile into my face because it was true and it was powerful. Marcus grew up in an Adventist home and he said, I'm paraphrasing, you correct me, Marcus. He said, you know, you grow up in the church listening to these hymns, right? But you have to go through certain things to appreciate them. Right? Does that make sense? It is when you go through the crucible of life, when life hits you and hits you hard. As you grow older, as you get more mature, as you see things, as you are beaten, as you are uh, perceived and opposed, as you walk into conflict with those around you, that's when certain promises in the Bible enlighten, right? And they hit you different because now you have the experience to know that it is only by going through the suffering that you're able to appreciate things that otherwise they will be unnoticed. So I have learned to appreciate the similarities of a Christian experience with that of a blacksmith. Raise your hand if you know what a blacksmith is, right? Right? What happens with the blacksmith? Let me share, share with you a quick picture. A blacksmith is physical and purposeful in his dealings. Let me say that again. A blacksmith is, number one, physical. Everybody say physical. physical. Number two, purposeful. Everybody say purposeful. A blacksmith is physical and purposeful in his dealings, right? He is violent with his hammer, and he uses fire to his advantage to shape, to mold the resistant steel. Every strike, boom, boom, is to move something out of the way that is not supposed to be what it is today. And it is at high temperatures 
that the blacksmith is able to work and mold and shape the hard, resistant steel because he has a plan. Can I get an amen? He has a purpose. He is very detailed in his approach, and he uses fire to his advantage. A blacksmith is precise in the sense that every strike is looking to mold that which is out of place. Note that the blacksmith performs best in high temperatures. When things are cold, an iron is just by itself. It is very difficult for the blacksmith to work. But when things are really hot, when the temperatures are very, very high, that's when the blacksmith is at his best. Amen? You know, when considering the connection between a blacksmith and God's dealing with us as followers, the theologian and pastor Todd Bolsinger said the following. I want you to pay attention to this quote. This is what it says. We are what? Raise your hand if you think that you continue to be raw. Right? We are raw material. Right? Scraps of hardened steel. With precision and purpose... God uses the heat of what? The heat of challenges. The difficulties of life. That which you don't want to go through. Which is uncomfortable. That you don't want to deal with. That is keeping you away from having a good sleep at night. That is what God is using to his advantage. The anvil of community of Panama City Saints. You know what an anvil is, right? I didn't know this word. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> so I went back to Mr. Google and I said, what is an anvil, right? I know in Spanish, but an anvil is that huge iron item, right? That blacksmith used to go and, and, and hit hard, right? And this, was, this hit me really hard because God uses the anvil of relationships and community. It is through your dealings with your brothers and sisters in Christ that God is going to shape your character and your way. God is not going to send an unknown individual into your life to shape you. As I always say, we are so nice with the people that we don't know. We are the best. But with the people that are closest to us, Does that sound about right? The anvil of community and relationships. Think about someone who is giving you a hard time in your life right now. God is using that individual to mold us, to shape us, to help us. Through the ambil of community. The quote says that God also uses the hammer of practices to transform us from raw material, like I said before, into something useful and beautiful. Can I get an amen? amen. Something beautiful and useful. You know... As I consider the ways in which God is dealing with me right now, I must admit that sometimes it feels like I am a lonely soldier in the army. Right? That's how Desmond Doss felt. That's how Job felt. That's how Jesus felt when he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me, right? And we know the story. But in all three of those instances, 
We know what happened, right? Desmond Dus was the first officer ever granted the honor. I don't remember right off, but whatever honor that is, whatever, what? The Medal of Honor. Thank you. That's why you guys are here. The first officer to be granted the Medal of Honor for doing above and beyond his duties for the sake of his fellow soldiers. Movies have been made. Books have been written. Documentaries have been shown. Because this individual chose to be a conscientious objector for the name of God. Amen? Amen. We know about Job who also felt lonely at times. Here we have Desmond, right? But Job said, for I know that what? My Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. Is that blessing applicable for us today? I challenge you to live your life with the mindset and a hope of resurrection. Amen? Because although his wife was telling him, curse your God and die, and he ultimately died, he knows that one day in that glorious morning, his Redeemer will awaken him for eternity. Amen? Amen? He said, just like Paul, and after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall what? Just like Desmond, see God through your difficulties, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold and not another how my heart yearns within me. So Panama City Saints, as I conclude today's message, hopefully you are able to realize that it doesn't matter where you are, what you're going through, the lacks that you may have in your life, that although you may feel as that lonely soldier, the loneliest of all, God is calling you and challenging you today to keep the good faith. Amen? Amen? To make a conscious decision to say, you know what? I know that I have been instructed to do this, to say this, to move this way, yet my convictions and my faith is way bigger than your expectation of me. Amen? Amen. For God has prepared a place for you. And his promise to come back, to see himself, to find himself in you. So I encourage you, Christian soldier, to go onward. Amen? Amen. To move forward, to remain faithful, to avoid giving in to the pressure. Because the crucible that you're going through is for your betterment. Is that a word? It's for your betterment. So hold on tight to your confession of faith. Do your best to navigate through the high temperatures with Christian love. Knowing that he who started the great work in you will be able to conclude such a work for the name of Jesus. Amen. Is there anyone in this sanctuary who says, you know what, pastor, I'm going through a crucible myself. Who would that be? Can you stand with us for a moment? We would like to pray for your situation today. We would like to invite you to remain a con she. Because in the end, you will not get an earthly medal of honor. You will get the crown of life given by Jesus when we get to heaven. Amen? So remain strong, remain faithful for his glory. Let us pray. Dear God, we are soldiers in your army who are standing up to do what was right before your eyes. 
Many people in this sanctuary are dealing with difficulties. They are going through the high temperatures. And military boots are being thrown left and right. We hear the voices of those mockers telling us, Oh, God won't be able to help you this time. But this morning we are reminded in the mighty name of Jesus that you are with us and you are not against us. That you are for us. So although we may be perceived as weirdos and cowards, we have the great boldness of all, and that is to remain firm despite the circumstances. I pray, Lord, that in the same way that Desmond was provided with the medal of honor and with the same assurance that Job said, I know that my Redeemer leave, and both of them st stood up firm, that every person here going through a crucible may be able to stand firm in the name of Jesus. That we're able to say to the matters of this world, I have my eyes fixed on Jesus. That we may all come to the realization that although we may find suffering in this world, we will not be crushed. We will not be destroyed. We will not be in despair. Because you are with us. So I, praise that you, I pray that you may uplift us and help us to continue to uplift the banner of resilience. Those of us dealing with health, please be a provider and a healer for us. Those of us dealing with provision, remain faithful to all of us. Those of us being Stroke by the anvil of community and relationships. May we endure the beating because we know that you will turn us into a something beautiful and something precise, something that is useful for your glory. So I pray, Lord, that we're able to uplift our heads today. And just like veterans in the army of God, that we are able to sing along, onward, Christian soldiers, because we know that we will meet you very soon and very soon. I pray for a shower of blessing over each individual in this sanctuary, and I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. All right, hymn 612, Onward Christian Soldiers. Let's all sing with one voice for our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh uh -huh. 
before uh, the prayer, they told me to uh, 4.30, Vesper starts today. Miss Anita? Thank you, Pastor, for that rousing message. Hope that and pray that we as individuals, when our time to witness for Christ, we won't fail as Desmond stood up. As Jude 24 and 25 says, now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his holy, of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forevermore. Let's bow our heads. Loving Father, we thank you that we still have an opportunity to say yes to you in your, our service and our commitment to your cause. We want others to be part of your kingdom, Lord. Help us to have a united mind, a united force, and that we give each other close to us and those that are far away unconditional love as you did for each of us. And when, we, when you come again, may we have others that can say that they learned of you from us. And when you come again also, Lord, we're looking forward to those mantras you prepared for us. And, and as we leave this place, may we not leave your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.